2010 Ford Mustang GT 5MT S197 Revision Convertible. Behold, the scourge of all car rental counters. We're flying to Orlando. We're going to Disneyland World and Epcot and Universal Studios. We're going to have a Florida adventure. No expense spared for me and my glorious wife. She just looks at me and runs the other way. <laughs> Marguerite, you're excited for Florida, aren't you? We'll go down and see my mother while we're down there. She's coughing much better these days. My name is George. Fiddler, and you're my wife. Watch me turn the traction control off. Oh no, my rental Mustang is spiraling out of control. And out comes my stool. I keep it on, stay there. Um, see that button up above your hazard light down there? That's your traction control, hit that. Ooh. Turn that off, traction control's off. Oh sure. Okay, first gear, load it up, dump it. Dude. Yeah, spin the wheels. And you could win it. Go to go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars, buy a mug or a digital download, and someone's going home with this beautiful adult-owned, old man-owned convertible stick shift Mustang. So go to go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars. Deadline to enter, of course, is next Wednesday. Thanks so much for taking part in these giveaways. You're helping RCR get to Australia in 2024. We've covered many Mustangs, but never convertibles. Convertible Mustangs were purchased in large numbers by Enterprise, Avis, and Hertz, and other major car rental companies in sunny states. A Mustang for rental companies is kind of like a mid-tier car. Oh, but cut the roof off and suddenly it's a premium rental, premium rental, 100 premium rental deposit. You're in the major leagues now. And some people liked their convertible rental Mustangs so much, they bought them at dealerships when they got back home. Now, this Mustang is not a formal rental because look in the center. There's a manual transmission. That's a clue. To my knowledge, rental companies never stocked stick shifts. Now, if you worked for Enterprise or whatever and you saw three-pedal cars show up in your inventory, let me know. I want to know the policies concerning manual transmission cars for rental companies. Now, the other group who bought convertible Mustangs were soft-serve parents whose kids were gone, and they just want to cruise down memory lane. Let's go to the malt shop. Ding, 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 I'm walking in the door. I got my Cialis dick in one hand and my contour glucose monitor in the other. We all live in the yellow submarine. My jizz is also yellow. Gonna eat ice cream and come in my depends. Gonna get back in my convertible Mustang and throw my soiled adult diaper over the bridge and into the Schuylkill River. Time to go home to my dinner of sirloin steak and instant mashed potatoes. The upside of these Mustangs is that they're now ripe for the picking because the convertible Mustangs lived their entire life indoors, unmodified, they had regular oil changes, and the convertible Mustangs all seem to be ordered with premium leather. And that's the story with this one. I mean, it has an exhaust, sure, but nothing else. Here's the reality of owning a Mustang. On the strength of the 4.6 liter modular V8, 
you are experiencing something closer to traditional Mustangs, as in first gens, than a lot more of the over-designed modern options. After struggling for a time under the diminished reputation of the Fox body, the Mustang was in real danger of getting sent to the glue factory. As the legend goes, Ford had planned on replacing the Mustang with the Ford Probe until people began writing letters to Ford advocating for the Mustang's continuation. So Ford decided to take a chance by ditching the Fox body for the new D2C rear-wheel drive platform and deciding to keep it exclusive to the Mustang. Originally, the idea was to take the same DEW platform that they had been using for the Thunderbird, the Lincoln LS, the Jaguar S-Type, and making a light version and calling that the Mustang, but it was too expensive to do that. And if you're going to continue making a car that you originally didn't want to make anymore, but kind of feel pressured into making, then the least the project could do is not cost an arm and a leg. The S197 took things back to basics with a full retro aesthetic, drawing inspiration from the first-gen Mustangs, and leaning into retrofuturism of modern engineering, but with a wide body and a domineering stance. No more pointless hood scoops. It looks like lean, sculpted muscle, like it was chiseled out of all the bluster of lesser Mustangs to reveal the potential hiding underneath. By 2010, we have this revision. It's a facelift. We've got a new front, new rear, more aerodynamic styling, redesigned headlights make this the last iteration before the switch over to the resting dick face S550 a car that did more damage to the perception of Mustang drivers than just about any other generation, largely because of the types of people who drove them. Everything you can say about Mustangs, you can also say about the Transformers movies. They keep getting louder, angrier, more basic, geared toward teenagers and people who overdo it on pre-workout. And they keep making more of them, even as they get farther and farther away from whatever inspired them in the first place. How you doing? I like the ride, man. Thank you. You want me to throw my bag in the back? Is it just you? Just me. Yep. All right, yeah, you can just throw it in the back seat. You sure? I don't want to mess up the leather. I'll clean it. Okay. Now, this doesn't necessarily make modern Mustangs bad, but it does mean that the people who own them tend to fall into a certain class of aggressive, showy drivers, which isn't fair, but then there aren't many cars as memeable as the Mustang because it's an American car that takes itself very seriously. And it's driven by people who take themselves even more seriously than that. You can't divorce a Mustang from the cliches surrounding its drivers, the type of people who look one way before turning and treat public spaces like a closed track, people who avoid turn signals like movie spoilers. They walk into a room and survey the crowd to find the nearest motherfucker who might because he wishes a motherfucker would. We got a problem? The favorite refrain of the Mustang driver rings out. We got a problem? Girlfriend sneezes. A stranger says, bless you. you got, we got a problem? A man from a long genetic line of diminishing returns. Just the legacy of men whose favorite pastime is writing letters to the editor that never get published. Aggression coded into the DNA. As if being an alpha demands driving like you're the only person on the road who matters. This is the cliche of the Mustang driver. It's the model you have to overcome when you're a Mustang driver. You're the one good kid in a class that just got their field trip canceled for acting up at lunch. You weren't the one who drank a handle of wild turkey and decided to slap box people outside of Panda Express, but you're painted with the same brush. This is why the S197 is important. It exists at a level that's both separate and above the contemporary attitudes about Mustangs. Because it's not just a good car, it's a hopeful car. It was still working with the three-valve engine. It was still working with a real live rear axle and that glorious 8.8 .8 rear with all the gearing choices you could want for it. Hope is a currency. It buys you optimism about your situation. It purchases a few more days of blissful ignorance about the other shoe that's about to drop. But hope also buys you the freedom to experience something on its own terms. You have the hope of a true Mustang experience. The hope that it's a car that will actually live up to every glowing word that's ever been printed about it. And when the S197 actually delivers, 
hope becomes something similar but different. Anticipation. You start to look forward to that sound of your commute, to picking up dry cleaning, to dropping that top, and taking long drives on back roads with hard corners. Just don't go too hard. You anticipate the twisty roads as much as the straights. Hope becomes anticipation as currency that plays for your ambition. What's funny is you kind of expect a Mustang to be way worse with the top down. You know, oh, it's just going to be louder and have chassis shutter. But this sounds better with the top down. And all that wind makes power delivery feel more intimate. Your perception of power dilates. It's a different sensory experience. Another consequence of the top down is that you're also more keenly aware of how, your, of how your car sounds to other people. So you're less likely to be a jerk about showing off. It's automotive empathy generation. But don't get me wrong, it's still a Mustang. It still makes you feel awesome, bro and encourages a certain amount of grandstanding tendencies. Because you can't drive a Mustang without really laying into it. And that's more or less what an S197 encourages. While the current gen Mustangs will blow this thing away on power delivery, you still get 315 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. And that's plenty, because you're also getting 325 pound-feet of torque at 4,250 RPM. You're going to have to row each gear quite to get the power out. It's, this is a five speed and there's a good amount of gearing between these. So first and second, the car is going to lurch forward and then squat back down. But that's kind of like the showy nature of this Mustang. You're, the point of the top down is for people to see you being awesome. Today is me day. Today is a cheat day, but I'm still lifting. I can't tell the difference between a convertible Mustang and a hardtop when it comes to cornering. Because that old 8.8 .8 live rear end still hops around when you hit an offside bump with only one side of the car. But you know what? I find myself taking corners faster because this visibility rules and I can look through corners by sitting up in my seat, something I can't do with a hardtop because I hit my head on Mustang's low roofs. I've been just driving around with this thing with earplugs in while playing Joe Santorini's summer song loud enough to hear them through the earplugs. The three valve four six modular makes a good noise, but it isn't kidding anyone. I'm just here to look awesome. So thank you Lance and Jake for helping out with this shoot. Their combined looks are perfect for this revision S197. But here's that button. And there it is. The traction control button. You want to push it, don't you? Once you press this, you're not coming back. Press this button, and you are locked into Mustang culture. You're Austin Butler. You're so deep into a character, you're never coming back. Mustangs will never not have a stigma surrounding them. But honestly, who cares? Seriously, who could possibly care? Let others get mad. Love your haters. Let them be mad. Let them stay mad. People may judge all they want, but they're never going to profane your driver's seat with their unwashed ass cheeks, so forget about them. Enjoy a top-down Mustang. You're not here to win any races. You're just here to enjoy the moment. Because if you spend your life worrying about what other people think, well, then your life doesn't really belong to you anymore, does it? Go.getentered to win slash regular cars. Mug digital download, link in the description. Good luck. Just let me drive you, my car's falling apart. Just let me drive you till it all kicks down. Enter now. So you don't have to drive an S550 Forever with hope The new currency Ever the Stang Stang